often in our lives can we point to the moment that something began? My own journey into nature began with a book. It was the sort of book that invited me to take in my surroundings and notice them, to consider what I could do in nature to smooth out my existence in the backcountry. The book invited me to savor the joys of a campfire and to discover how good food is cooked in the open air over an open flame. The book invited me to linger in nature and savor my surroundings. It would open the door to my wondering at animal signs and what grizzled fur stuck in the sap of a pine tree could possibly betoken. And it was thinking about this book that inspired me to start this video series, which I'm calling Bent Brooks Bushcraft Bookshelf. My goal with this series is to bring to life in tangible fashion the pages of books that explore bushcraft, nature, camping, hiking, animal tracking, and other related topics by introducing readers to the authors and their backgrounds, by showing readers pages from the texts, and by sharing sections of these books, sentences, paragraphs, pages, chapters, that resonate with those who love and live in the wilderness. Some will be manuals or guidebooks, some narratives of wilderness travels, some volumes of poetry that capture the essence of nature. Unlike reviews, my goal here is less to rate the quality of a text and more to evoke its spirit, to give viewers a sense of a work from a sampling of its pages, from recordings of my own experiences of trying to go out and try a given author's wisdom or techniques. Among writers I plan to explore are Nesmuk and Kephart, Larry Dean Olson and Morris Kahansky, Mears, Jacobson, Hillcourt, Muir, Canterbury, Gooley, Townsend, Kelstrom, Carson, Dickinson, Wordsworth, and Thoreau. Among the titles to be featured are Woodcraft and Camping, Outdoor Survival Skills, Essential Bushcraft, The Lost Art of Reading Nature's Signs, The Natural Navigator, Bushcraft 101, The Golden Book of Camping, Be Expert with Map and Compass, The Backpacker's Handbook, Walden, Silent Spring, Sand County Almanac, and A Pilgrim at Tinker Creek. So let's begin. A number of years ago, I purchased a reprint of one of my favorite books from childhood. Now let me back up. The official Boy Scout handbook was written by William Greenbar Bill Hillcourt. And this was a book that I absolutely loved during my years in scouting. I aged out before I ever earned Eagle because my troop fell apart, but my memories of scouting were golden just as my memories of this book are also golden. Sorry about the pun. You'll notice that it's also written by William Hillcourt. Honored with the title Scoutmaster to the World, William Greenbar Bill Hillcourt lived from 1900 to 1992. He died while traveling on a scouting expedition in Sweden. Arguably the single greatest influence on his life was Lord Baden Powell, a veteran of campaigns in India and Africa in the British Army, who wrote a book called Scouting for Boys in 1909. Hillcourt himself was a prolific writer, eventually writing the authorized biography of Lord Baden-Powell, but also many scout books, including my own scout handbook from my childhood, and yes, the Golden Book of Camping, which I am going to talk about today. In this book, Hillcourt's love of the outdoors is contagious. North and south, east and west, he writes, summer and winter, camping goes on in any climate, any season. Camping is for everyone, everywhere, every month of the year. The whole country lies open to you. You can choose seashore or forest, mountain or desert for all kinds of camping trips. In addition to Hillcourt's own writing, the book is illustrated by Ernest Kurt Barth with wonderful 1950s era images that evoke both the love of adventure and the outdoors as well as the optimism that pervaded the Americas in the 1950s. For Hillcourt, the greatest way to explore the natural world was lightweight camping with a friend. 
In the book he describes many ways you can build your own gear. One of them is pots and pans. This was something that I decided to try out for purposes of my Bushcraft Bookshelf series. So I grabbed some tin cans that I had sitting around in my shop and I began to follow the directions in the book. The directions are all told in pictures, the brilliant illustrations by William Kurt Barth. And so it really was not very difficult at all for me, over a period of about an hour, to use found materials, tin cans, brass rivets, and copper wire, to create both a lid and a base for a can, as well as a bale that I shaped out of a piece of wire that's used to hold insulation into the walls. It only remained for me to test this piece of gear and see if Hillcourt's directions and ideas were as viable as they seemed. I grabbed my knife and I grabbed my fire steel and a stove that I'm currently in the process of testing. And I set out to boil some water. It will doubtless surprise no one that Hillcourt's pot works perfectly. In fact, the lid fits very securely, almost too tight, although I discovered you can flip it upside down for an easier fit. The lid will probably loosen up over time, but I was really pleased as I made this, really incredibly pleased as a wave of nostalgia swept over me. For probably 30 years I've looked at the illustrations in this book and I've loved them and I've enjoyed them but I've never made something from the book until now. And just as every do-it-yourself project has that incredible joy that comes with it, making a pot with a bale from a tin can using the guidelines of Hillquart's book and the wisdom from generations ago was somehow a wonderful experience for me. This is the end of my first episode of Bushcraft Bookshelf. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you've learned a little something about Mr. Hillcourt and his contributions to scouting and to camping and to boys' imaginations everywhere. Pimp Brook out.